Midwestern Cowboy, this is Iron Horse. Thanks for watching. Wanted to tell a little bit about a recent experience that I had. We took our kids from our church down to Florida, North Fort Myers, Florida, on a work camp, a Church of the Brethren work camp. It was kind of funny, really, I, when I told all the guys at work that I was going on a work camp slash mission trip, they said, oh, well, hey, where are you going? Are you going to Cuba or Haiti or Guatemala or, you know, Mexico? You know, where are you going? And I said, well, uh, <clears throat> we're, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, going to uh, uh, <clears throat> Florida. <laughs> Almost apologetically. And they laughed a little bit about that. But the reality is, is that the place that we went to, it really wasn't anywhere, you know, where there was poverty. And we didn't go to, uh, uh, you know, help the poor or anything like that. Instead, we went to work. It was a work camp. And we worked at a farm uh, called ECHO, the Global Research Farm in North Fort Myers, Florida. Really a great place. What they do, their mission there is they uh, they research farming technologies. This is going to sound maybe kind of boring, I don't know, but it, but it was really interesting. They research farming technologies, ways to creatively uh, increase crop production, not for any type of commercial use, but rather just to feed people. Uh, Every 12 seconds in the world somewhere, we learned, a child dies of hunger in the world. And that just, that's just not acceptable. And the vision of ECHO is that the world has all the resources that it needs, that human beings globally have all the resources they need to be able to feed everybody. And what they research at ECHO is technologies that help people do just that. How do you grow food? let's say, in a desert environment. How do you grow food in a wetland? Those are the types of questions that the folks at ECHO ask, and they develop technolo technologies to do exactly that. And it was really a, a great way to spend the week. We, we got to work with interns from all over the world that have come to ECHO to learn. And these are mostly missionary kids that are going to go back to the communities that they love and teach people there how to, teach farmers there especially, how to wisely grow food so that uh, they can really grow and, and capitalize, maximize the crop outputs and feed more people. I'll show some pictures of the place just to share it with you, just to expose it. Uh, to you a little bit to give you an idea of what they do there. So a lot of these pictures are, you know, the first day we got to take a tour. And one of the things that I found really interesting was uh, what they called aquaponics. And that's what the first pictures I'll show are. Aquaponics was a way to, you know, if you, if you think about, you know, a, a, a desert environment, this would work perfect there. Now you'd have to truck all this stuff in, but what you do is you set up a, you know, some giant tanks full of water and you fill them full of fish. Tilapia is what they used. And the way that works is the, the waste from the fish gets cycled into a system that then uses those nutrients so that you can actually plant crops right there in those tanks. And then of course the crops and the and the roots of the crops and all that stuff kind of filter out the you know the bad stuff out of the water, the nutrients, the fish waste, and it then recycles back into the fish clean water again for them so that they can live and have an environment in which they which they can live and so what you could do if you had this system is you could eat the vegetables that you grow and you could also have meat from the fish as they reproduce and all of that. So it's just kind of its own ecosystem and I thought that was really a neat concept. Now again, most of what they do at ECHO, they try to, they try to use local resources, locally available resources. So
so that you don't have to truck a bunch of stuff in and spend a lot of money. Aquaponics was not that. You, you'd have to build that and be intentional about doing so. But uh, one of the other areas they had was the urban environment and really some neat concepts about growing crops in an urban environment. That's, in fact, one of the biggest needs in the world globally is that you know people live in cities where you really don't have space for a garden. And uh, so what do you do? You know, how do you grow food in a place like that? Well, they had some concepts there that could be used, like say on the rooftop of your house, a lot of these places have a flat roof. Uh, you know, you take a five gallon bucket and cut a hole in it, put the lid back on it and cut a little hole in the lid, take a carpet remnant and just let that rainwater fill the bucket and the carpet and then over time, as, it, as the bucket fills, uh, the carpet will just slowly wick that water out. And uh, you can then, you know, with some mulch and things like that, you can get some crops to take root on carpet. But that was fascinating. And another thing, another concept is to use tires. Old tires laying around. Just put some topsoil into a tire and, man, you've got an instant garden. Pretty amazing concepts, really, at Echo. There were there were a lot of things. We spent most of our time weeding, uh, and then we took on a tough job of uh, spent one day making bricks. That was really cool, bricks to build shelters with and things like that. Uh, but then we also probably the biggest project was we stripped out their rice field. They were going to remodel that, and that was hard work down into the sand and cinder blocks and tarps and water and just sludge everywhere and the sand was full of fire ants which they weren't happy with us at all being in there that was kind of a tough job but we worked hard we played hard uh, we had great fellowship great devotions and I think that this was just a really worthy trip uh, just highly recommend if you're ever down in North Fort Myers, Florida and you want to do something interesting, get a chance to swing by Echo and check it out. One final comment that I'll make is, uh, boy, we ate good when we were there. We'd be slaving away and one of the interns or staff would come walking up with uh, some crazy fruit that they were growing down there. Uh, stuff like uh, cranberry hibiscus leaves too, you could eat those and those were really, really, really good to eat. Mangoes, passion fruit, something called jackfruit that only goes, er grows every couple of years. That was really good, kind of kind of a little bit like a peach texture, uh, but real sweet flavor. And these weren't, uh, these are foods that we normally don't get to eat here in the United States. So it was a real treat to get to eat some of that stuff. and. Uh, really just get a, an appreciation for what they do there. Anyway, wanted to share a little bit of our picture of, of our trip with you guys and some pictures of our trip. Uh, please uh, comment below, like, subscribe. If this video is of interest to you, then uh, by all means, please take the time to comment to me. I try to be responsive to those things. But hey, Midwestern Cowboy, this is Iron Horse. Thanks for watching.